What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here and welcome to A Chat with Beastly. Today I'd like to give you my thoughts on Nintendo, a company with a past that's steeped in console successes yet marred in questionable decisions regarding generational leaps and even more questionable hardware choices. Let me just start this video by saying this. I love Nintendo. How could I not? As a kid born in the 80s who saw and felt the magic that the NES brought into his life, that fact is undeniable. Mario, Link, Samus, and Donkey Kong were big parts of my childhood. And growing up with Nintendo and watching my favorite video games take new and exciting forms on newer consoles like the Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo 64, GameCube, and beyond has been a gift that is hard to put into words. I can simply sum it up by saying that Nintendo is a part of who I am. Their games were the first chances I had as a kid to escape into imagination and allow myself to drift into their amazing worlds. The Nintendo Switch, Nintendo's latest console, launched earlier this year. I bought one at release and for the most part really enjoyed it. In the subsequent months I have to admit that my Switch excitement has waned. I began to notice that the things I loved about the Switch mattered less as I felt little motivation to actually turn on my hybrid console. The problem for me was the games. I know, before you guys tear into me in the comment section, there are a lot of great games on the Switch besides Breath of the Wild. Many people are going to say games like Splatoon, Mario Kart 8, and ARMS are big titles worth playing, and I would agree with you, but these are not the titles that I gravitate toward as a gamer. I have longed for games that interest me to come to the Switch, and after the last few Nintendo Directs, I began to think that the Switch could suffer the same fate as what many gamers consider Nintendo's misstep, the Wii U. The Wii U suffered as it wasn't as advanced as its competition, and the console utterly lacked support from third-party developers. Well, on September 13th, 2017, Nintendo had their latest Nintendo Direct, and I gotta say I was extremely shocked by what I saw. I'm pretty happy to say that Nintendo looks like they're on the right track. They've made some great strides in the right direction, and against all odds, attracted some titans in the third-party space. I'll just go over a few titles that were announced at this Direct that got me really hyped. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 looked absolutely stunning. It's possibly the best looking game I've seen so far on the Switch. Uh, the world looks alive, the gameplay looks deep, and I can't wait to have a chance to take a game like this on the go. It'll be a first time for me to take something this deep on the go. Xenoblade Chronicles drops December 1st. A game that I've been looking forward to since the Switch was announced is Skyrim. It's a nice port of the, a game that's about five or six years old, but it does have new modes, and this game releases on November 17th. I've always had a dream of taking a Skyrim or an Elder Scrolls game uh, on the go with me. And it's also really good to have a release date finally for that game. Unexpected gems that made me scream with delight were Bethesda's offerings of 2016's Doom, which I devoured that game on PS4. I love that game, every second of it. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what this is going to be all about. The differences on the Switch compared to other consoles is going to be interesting to see. And Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, and both of these games, Doom and Wolfenstein, will be releasing sometime in 2018. Hopefully it's Q1. A game that looks to scratch the itch of the more traditional JRPG fans is Square Enix's Project Octopath Traveler, which has a downloadable demo on the Nintendo eShop. So I like how Nintendo was kind of doing that with their uh, event. They said things and they were available right now, and to me that's really exciting. The 2DS was also mentioned, and it seems to be Nintendo's focus as they back away from the 3DS, and games like Minecraft were revealed and simultaneously launched. So yeah, you can buy that now. Minecraft is available on 3DS, 2DS. A huge mic drop in my opinion, even though I'm not a huge fan of the game, I know how big the franchise is, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon, which is an updated remake of sorts for the 2DS, 3DS, and it looks completely updated for the new hardware. Uh, I showed that to my daughter, she lost her mind, so that's going to be a big deal. Nintendo also announced some old Nintendo arcade games uh, coming to the Switch, kind of like Punch-Out and things you played in the arcade years ago. Don't know how much appeal that's going to have, but they did show Kirby All-Star Allies, which looks like a very fun traditional platformer. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2, I actually covered this in a video previously, were also talked about and given a release date. I'm excited to see that, but I'm actually more excited about the connection, the deal that's going on between Nintendo and Capcom, and what could possibly be happening through this partnership in the future. And we also saw a beautiful port of the ever-popular Rocket League. 
So the point of this video is that Nintendo doesn't look nearly as bad as they have in the past few months, past few years, right now. They look great. They're moving forward and building partnerships with third parties and showing us what the Switch is really made of. The thought that Doom could run on the Switch boggles my mind, but it's real and it's happening. Square, Atlas, Bethesda, and Capcom are a start, and from what I can see, it's a good start. If Nintendo continues on the path they're on, I see happy gamers and a prospering Nintendo. I'm excited just knowing that there are actually third parties working with Nintendo and bringing great games to the console. Who knows, maybe one day we'll see Overwatch or a possible Destiny, Dark Souls, Resident Evil 7, or Final Fantasy 15 because some of these developers are actually working with Nintendo. The future is bright for Nintendo, and the competition better not sleep on what the Switch could mean for the future of gaming. If this Nintendo Direct was any indication, Nintendo has some cards in its hands that they are unwilling to reveal until the time is right, which is awesome for gamers, and I guess it would be terrifying for Nintendo's competition. To me, it just feels really good to acknowledge and know that Nintendo is back. Thank you so much for joining me today for this episode of A Chat With Beastly. Leave your comments below and tell me what you think about Nintendo's future with the Switch. Please leave a like and consider supporting this channel on Patreon. There is a link in the description. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.